So today we have a special guest we want to share with you. And we're going to be talking about the single part of life. Hey guys. Hi, welcome. I'm Maridana. I'm Nick. And together, and together we, we are, are your relationship, relationship coaches. Hope you enjoy our video. Bye. Bye. And what it's like being single. Hmm. Being Is it single good? Is it good? Yeah. Let's I remember let's... those days being good days. I don't know how to take that. I don't know how to take that now. <laughs> they were good because of, of the self-work I was able to do. All right then. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Let, let's find out some more about this then. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to ask our guest to introduce himself to you and then we'll get right into it. Hi guys, I'm uh, Shmuel. I'm 34 years old. I live uh, in Israel at the moment. And uh, I actually met uh, Maridana a couple of months ago and uh, I did one of her amazing courses. And uh, I'm here, you know, to give my input of how to be single and uh, what it's like to be single. Oh, that's fantastic. That's, that's really good. So, so I, I guess my, my first question, I'm just going to jump straight on in. Uh, you, hmm. you said what it's like and how I like being single. So do you find yourself... Look, are, you, are you looking for, are you consciously looking for like a, a life partner? Um, I'm not constant. It, it's, um, it's a complicated question because I like being single and I like being in a relationship. And I think when you're in a relationship, sometimes you feel like you kind of I don't know, in a jail, you could say sometimes. I mean, not necessarily like in a negative way, but like there are some freedoms that it's kind of like taken away from you because it might be looked upon uh, badly within the relationship. And then when you're single, it's kind of like you miss having that, you know, like that uh, somebody that cares for you, somebody that, uh, that is always asking how you are. And it's like the first thought that they think of, you know, like uh, during the day. So it's like it's a very conflicting kind of um, question, you could say, because I person personally, me, um, I like being single, but I also love love. So it's um, it's a give and take. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was an interesting response. Um, we've never quite heard it that way, and we're glad you you were honest enough to express to us that being in a relationship sometimes feels like a jail you know that's that's one of the downfalls of it the fact that persons feel as though and you can correct me if i'm wrong they cannot truly express themselves or be themselves a hundred percent is is that what you're saying yes you can't be yourself 100 percent uh I believe like in a relationship, I, well, I think in a relationship you kind of have to give and you have sometimes to give up, you could say. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I, I'm a dancer, okay? So in the dancing scene, Latin dancing, so it's like socials, I'm not professional or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I do love uh, dancing salsa, bachata, um, you know, like socials, people who like uh, take some lessons and they dance socially. And in these kind of places, um, people are usually, they're not bringing their own partner, you know, like you could bring your own partner and you can dance with your own partner, but you dance with everybody in, in the room. And it's, it's a way for you to enjoy, you know, friendship. It's a way for you to get better at dancing. Every person that you dance with, you get a little bit of technique. You learn a little something, oh, this person does this, so I can, you know, this person understands my, my style. So a lot of people that are outside of this community, and I'm saying this, this is specifically because it's me, it's, my, it's the way I, I see this, but a lot of people who are outside of this community and they date people from this community, they find it kind of really hard. I can understand why they find it hard because they don't understand the way that people connect and the way that people uh, enjoy this kind of uh, community. But... It's, uh, some people give up dancing, you know, and for, let's say for me, I would, I would never date somebody that would prevent me from dancing, which happened before in the past. Mm -hmm. And 
So that's what I mean when I say you're in jail. It's, this is one example of a couple of examples that I, that I can say, you know, like if I like going out, you know, like the whole week, you know, that person might not like going out the whole week, you know? And so it's, it's my, my enjoyment as well. So sometimes I, this is why I say it, maybe it's an extreme word to say jail, you know, <laughs> because, you know, love is also, there's also the, the good parts. There's also the positive parts, you know, there's, there is, like I said before, but it does feel sometimes that um, you're locked in a situation where you can't fully be yourself, like you said. So when you when you talk about the fact that um, you can't necessarily, uh, I guess, do, do you feel then that maybe you or the other person can't open up enough to sort of, I, I guess really put all of the honesty out there and everything to say, look, you know, this is what I really do enjoy doing. And yes, I enjoy that. And I either want you to be part of it or, you know, then we have to, we have to change in some way. So I think you're absolutely right. I think honesty is, first of all, if, if there's no honesty, there's no, there's no trust, you know? So, I think uh, honesty is, is, is very basic in a relationship. And uh, l- like I said before, I would, it's something that you also mature, you know, because when, when I was younger, you know, like I would adapt to somebody else and I would, I, would give, I would give up what I wanted in order to be with that person and adapt to that situation. And then it just ended up not being a good relationship because then when I wanted to do the things that I wanted to do, it was too late, you know, like it was not too late, but like it wasn't really acceptable in that situation. So I think it's very important to be very, very open, very honest and have all the cards on the table. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people also, that's the game of the, the single, the single ladies, the single men or, or whatever, you know, like people want to, to have this game of like uh, attraction and you know like uh, somebody to be pursued and and um, so I I'm not like that I'm a very open person I think it's very important to be honest to have you know show all your cards um, and because I you don't want to go into a situation where afterwards it's too late to um, yeah. you know fix the situation. Yeah, it becomes it becomes difficult because you end you end up going down a path with a relationship, and then all of a sudden these sort of let's say these little surprises jump out the box. Like if I I'll p- if I pick on you, all of a sudden say you're in a relationship, and then all of a sudden you say, well, actually I'm really into Latin dancing, mm. and if you've never been open with that in the first instance, it's like what where you know where did that come from, and, yeah. and it becomes a <clears throat> You know, it is a big surprise. I think you're, you're yeah. very right about you've got to be honest up front and open up front. And that's what I think a lot of people have difficulty with is, is that vulnerability, first of all, of, you know, letting people in mm-hmm. and letting them see the whole picture. Don't you think so? Yeah, and I wanted to say that what I'm hearing from Sashmuel also is that he seems to be on his own personal journey. He's noticed what's happened in past relationships and the fact mm-hmm. that he's lost himself. And it's very important. You've done something so significant, which has great high value, it's huge which amount, yeah. Yeah, is going to give you the best of both worlds. The fact that you're not going to give up yourself because that is who somebody would fall in love with. That person dancing that person who is so good at expressing himself so well on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. That person who has friendships and knows boundaries when he's on the dance floor. You know, you you understand how to connect for your art, but not be sexual with persons who are just your friends. And you're right, not a lot of persons may be able to date someone as confident as you, who is already standing in your own and saying, I know who I am. Mm. I know what I like. I know what I don't like also. So if we're going to tangle, <laughs> you better be ready. 
you know? So yeah, thank you for expressing that to us. I, I think also it, it, goes, uh, it goes for that, what we're talking about, about being open uh, of how, the things you enjoy to do, the things that, uh, that, that, you, that, that are true to your personality. And um, I'm not a Virgin Mary, just by the way. So I think that also is, uh, it's also applicable for uh, the, the sexual activity that you have with a partner. Because sometimes you're like really scared. You might, you might think somebody's like, oh, that person's going to think I, I like weird stuff or, you know, like uh, I'm a freak or, or whatnot. And I think it's really important for you to be as open as possible and make that person feel that, you know, the things that you like are normal, you could say. Um, because then again, you're in a situation where all of a sudden you might ask the person, you know, like, I like this, you know, and then the person might look at you like, what are you talking about? You know, this is like, this is some freaky stuff, you know, like, uh, so I think it's in that department, I think it's also very important to be very open because when, when you're very open, then, you know, you, you, the, your partner also will be very open to what they like as well. Yeah. So everybody's comfortable, you know, like, uh, not, if you hide things, in the end, you, people are going to find out, you know, like it's not, uh, you can't, you just can't hide things. It's just, if you're in a relationship, everything has to be open. See, everybody has secrets, but when you're in a relationship, it's like everything is out in the open. Everything, you know, everything is, everything's in the cards. So just show the cards. That's what I, that's what I think. So that, that, I think that, you know, that does ring very true. You know, our, our sort of big philosophy and all, and my in just about every video that we do, you know, we mm -hmm. always talk about the one thing, the major thing is communication. Yeah. Uh, and what you're saying there is so true. And we, we covered this topic slightly, um, uh, talking about sort of sex and what people wanted and what yeah. people needed. And, yeah. you know, somebody was, somebody had said something about it being freaky. Mm -hmm. And I think we had said that it's, it's not freaky if you've both spoken about it, you both understand and you both agree. Yeah. If you're forcing somebody, that's a different situation. But if you yeah. get to a point where you can communicate and it's, well, I like this, I want that, right, right. you do this, I'll do that. That's you know, that, that, that's a huge, huge sort of step that you make going down the road. Because I feel as though having <laughs> those conversations about intimate moments take you to a higher level of intimacy yeah you have like the basics where you can kiss someone etc but once you start getting to know your partner your it's like your intimacy level sorry <laughs> goes <laughs> to the roof you know and you you end up weaving this very special web with yeah. someone unique someone who understands you in a certain way, someone who accepts you in a certain way. And um, coming from that, I want to ask you, Sashmuel, what exactly yeah. do you consider the, the most important things? Maybe the top three, the top five most important things that you would really like to see in a partner if ever you get back into a relationship? Uh, well, first of all, I, I, I don't know if it was, it was not clear. I didn't mention it, but uh, I, I am not straight. I am uh, playing on the other team. Um, <laughs> so I, it's very, I could say it's very complicated, but I think in the end, I think both, uh, both sides have its complications and everybody goes through the same thing, especially nowadays. Everybody's acting the same exact way, you know, and I think there's, depending on which country i think there's more openness to um to being like homosexual or or whatnot yeah. um i think the first uh the, the first very thing without sounding really like uh, shallow or anything like that is i think you have to be really attracted to you know the person that you want to go out with yeah. um i think uh that's i i don't i don't know if it's number one but uh because I've dated people who I initially wasn't so attracted to it, but their personality like totally won me over. Um, but I feel that uh, 
I, I feel that being attracted to somebody, it's, it's very, very important. Um, a second item, I would say, uh, you know, just making me feel comfortable in the conversation, like somebody that maybe has humor, that finds me funny, you know, that I'm not laughing at myself, you know. Um, here in Israel, I am, if, every, if anybody has ever been to Israel, met Israelis, they're, they're very tough on the outside, you know, like they have like that bad man kind of like bad boy kind of like image, but they're like softies on the inside. So it's really hard um, to, once you get through the crust, it's all good. But you know, that crust is like, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's too hard for me, you know, like, and I need somebody that like makes me feel comfortable. That, that finds me like uh, funny, you know, like that there's a conversation, that there's communication. I was dating somebody uh, for a long distance in a different country. And I think what really worked is that our communication was very, very, very good. Um, so that's very, very important as well. Um, and I think uh, the, the third and very maybe first thing but uh, also being on the same page you know sometimes people are just in the different stages of their life like let's say at at the moment I, I would love to be a father you know but not every gay man wants to be a father right now you know maybe they want to wait till they're 50 60 to maybe start thinking about having a family so if if the person is not on the same page it's just a waste of time you know like maybe if you just want to like a summer romance or something like that but you know, if you if you want something for like the long time for the long run, I think it has the person has to be on the same page. I think uh, again, again, it comes back to the to the first thing that we spoke about about honesty. You know, like yeah. putting the cards on the table. Um, and I think those those three are are really 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 up there. You know, I'm I'm sure that there's a I have a huge list of you know of like uh, you know rules and regulations that people have to go through, but. Uh, I think those are the most, uh, are on the, on the very, very top. So, so I, I, I'll ask you about, about your long distance relationship because Maradona and I both went through that when, um, oh, when, when, when she was in Taiwan. And I have to say that that was tough. Yeah. That was tough, huh? Yeah. That, that really um, I, I can't say it was really easy either, but. Um, I figured that I I had to be more communicate communicative. Yeah. I had to 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 you know find ways to to make the conversation interesting. You know, like and uh, we just we found ways to to maybe see each other in couple of every couple of months. Yeah. Um, the reason why it ended doesn't really matter, but uh, it wasn't because it wasn't because of the distance. Let's just say. But um, I think the communication was was really key, and it, while it was going on, it really worked. You know, it it wasn't it wasn't that big of an issue. It's very hard. It's not for everybody. Um, but I think whenever you whenever you find somebody that you really like, you know, there's not uh, there's not much you can do about it. You know, heart wise, you know, you can. You can shut it out and then, you know, go through a phase of like shutting that person out. But I'm, I, I like to be all in, you know, like once, uh, once there is somebody that I really think it's worth gold, you know, so um, communication was very, very big. Okay. So we're in the month of February and it's considered the month of love. <laughs> what are you doing for this month? What do you typically do during February, Valentine's month? If I'm alone or if I... <laughs> no. Finding people to send cards. <laughs> but what are you doing this month? Uh, well, I'm single and ready to mingle. Um, I, don't, I don't really... I mean... I don't find this date very like uh, so special, you know. Like uh, I think uh, I think that should be celebrated something every day, you know. It should be something that uh, every day should be should be important. And if you don't have time every day, because everybody has a life, everybody has a job, everybody has certain routines that they have to keep up, you know, 
to maintain their lifestyle or whatever it is that they, they do. Um, but I think it's important to, to take uh, maybe a, a date day or something, you know, like to make something special, even if it's something once a month or once a week um, to kind of break, you know, the, the, the routine of like, hey, honey, good night, good morning, work and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, I think it's really, I think it's really nice, you know, like it's a, if you have a partner and you're able to get a reservation, you know, like, you know, very booked, uh, um, but it's also very commercial, you know, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it or anything like that. I think this month is very commercial. And I think it's, if, if you have somebody that's special, it just needs to be something that needs to be celebrated every day because like, look at me now I'm single. And I want to have a relationship, you know, and so you have to make it worth it. So it's just a matter of doing it, uh, something nice. I don't know, every time that you're able to do it, not just one month. That's really nice. That's really, really nice. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we know some uh, persons do believe that too. Go ahead. No, I, I, I was going to ask you a question again. I don't mind if you don't want to answer it. When you, when you said, I'm single and ready to mingle, uh, how easy is it to mingle in Israel? Well, you're talking to a... To I'm really from a social perspective. Um, you know, how are, what are attitudes like? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm interested because it, it's, not a, it's not really a country that you kind of hear a lot about mm -hmm. in, in either way, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some countries that are, are terrible toward, you know, terribly homophobic, um, you know, yeah. around the world. And, and Israel is not one that I've really heard anything either way. I mean, well, just, just in general, Israel is a very, is a very uh, advanced country, you could say. It's very, 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 very modern. Um, I would say uh, Jerusalem, which I, I live very close to Jerusalem and I work in Jerusalem. It's a very conservative uh, kind of uh, city, you could say. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I, don't, I wouldn't feel so comfortable, let's say, if I had a partner with going by hand or something like that. Right. Um, but it's something that's, that's not really an issue here. You know, people... Uh, in Tel Aviv, it's pretty, I think it's like maybe the, the third or fifth uh, city in gayest city in the world or something like that. You know, like um, it's uh, in terms of, of mingling for gay men, it's not, uh, it's not a really big problem. Um, it just depends on which area you are. Most, most gay people, you could say, are con uh, concentrated in Tel Aviv. Right. Um, it's, it's like uh, every day there's a different. Uh, I don't know, party, you could say. Um, all, a lot of restaurants, are, they have like the, the rainbow flag and like for a gay friendly, you could say. So it's very, it's very open. It's very, um, it, there's no, it's, it's pretty much, there are some problems with the law um, that there, there's been some protest about it um, for um, uh, surrogacy. Uh, but in, in terms of mingling, it's not, uh, it's not an issue. Um, also for straight people, it's not, uh, it's very modern. It's just like, uh, any other country. I think maybe a bit of, a bit more conservative, let's say, than the States or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it's, um, modern, modern country. You wouldn't see any difference. People in the army... You can be gay in the army and openly gay and nothing. And like, they're, they're like, so you can still draft. It's not, it's not even an issue yeah. not to draft. Still drafting. Yeah. <laughs> they're still drafting. They're not going to let you go out so easily. All right. So we want to say thank you very much for being thank you. part of our uh, theory, Love Thyself. Um, we really appreciate you being yeah. here. Really, really well, thank you. Really yeah. great. Thank you for thank you for inviting me. I wouldn't miss it for the world, just so you know. Yeah. Thank uh, it's you. It's been really good. Thank you. I don't know if you have any parting words that you want to leave with our audience. Well, uh, follow this couple because they're not what they're talking about. Uh, don't forget to do a like on the video because I want to go viral. <laughs> I like. Um, 
I like and, it. And uh, invite me whenever you want uh, to invite me again. You know, I'm an open book. You can ask any questions you like, whenever you like. I don't hold anything back. We appreciate All right. that. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.